What up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Zach Lesage here. Today we're going to be trying something spicy, and that's going to be the top 10 best Twilight Masquerade decks. NAIC is coming up soon. Pre-releases are going to be happening sooner. And of course, you want to know what the best decks are. This set actually shakes up our metagame a lot more than I thought it would at first glance, and I have a really cool top 10 decks list. Things might change, the list, the set's not officially out or anything else like that, and I'm not aiming for this to be the absolute end-all, be-all list, but I do think I have a really good hunch, and together with Dom, shout out Dom, our video editor, three-time day two player, one of my best friends, uh, for helping me cook up this video, coming up with a lot of the lists, and helping me rank them. Uh, you'll be able to look at all the deck lists, we have the copy and pasteables in the pinned comment below, and of course... Uh, I'm going to give you some insight on the decks. They're cool lists. That's what we want. Let's get to it. Blocking the way at number 10 is Snorlax Block Control. Now, this deck kind of took a backseat in the Twilight Masquerade meta. I mean, it does have some decent results in the top 32, but really, Pidgeot Control is the deck that's taken over. Where this deck gains the strength from Twilight Masquerade is through the release of cards such as Fable Flute. Now, shout out to Justin Basil for the translations when it comes down to things. But uh, I do want to let people know that you can uh, that you can check out the website, learn what these cards do, and the cards might change as they get translated completely to English. Um, reveal the top five cards of your opponent's deck. Put any number of basic Pokemon you find there on your opponent's bench. Your opponent shuffles the other cards back into their deck. That allows you to bring up cards such as um, Luminion that your opponent might not be able to put back in their deck, Radiant Greninja. We now have a way to get back into our opponent's uh, board and control that way. There's also a handy circulator, so if this Pokemon, if the, the Pokemon this card is attached to is in your active Pokemon and is damaged by an opponent's attack, even if it's knocked out, move an energy card from that attacking Pokemon to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So having a few more options to kind of slow down our opponents, um, kind of control our opponent is of course going to be very good when it comes down to this type of deck. Uh, the core of the deck is going to remain very similar. So as we kind of go through uh, our format, I'm assuming that these are the cards that players are going to be adding in, and lists are going to look incredibly similar to this. This deck may move up or move down depending on which decks are at the top, but I did put it conservatively at number 10. Again, if you haven't already given this video a like, like, share, subscribe, let us know in the comments what you think the other nine decks are in this video, and of course, we do have the pinned comment where you can copy and paste any of these decks right into the Limitless Tabletop Simulators to playtest with your friends. Lost Zone ended up at number 9 is Lost Zone Box. Now, there aren't really too many new cards that this deck has gained, but I do appreciate the cards that we've added into this deck. Blood Moon Ursaluna is probably going to be one of the biggest cards that we're going to see in the, out of the set, seeing success, and that's because it has an ability very similar to Radiant Charizard that's already seen success. It's Veteran's Technique ability, it says this Pokemon's Blood Moon attack costs colorless less for each prize card your opponent has taken. Um, that means that if your opponent takes five prize cards, you can do 240 damage for free. And of course, we can always see how this Pokemon can attack out of nowhere. We basically have a new EX Pokemon that can be Mirage Gated to in the middle of the game, or just have a free attack in the late game, which is going to be helpful when we've exhausted some of our resources. One of the other cool cards that I like in this deck, considering we have the Dark Energies for Hoopa and Roaring Moon EX, is Monkey Dory. Now, Monkey Dory is not really a Pokemon that I thought much of when I was first looking through this set, and it's one of those things where my opinion on it has definitely changed a little bit. Um, Monkey Dory has an ability where if you have a Dark Energy attached to it, this Pokemon can move 30, uh, 3 damage counters from one of your Pokemon um, to one of your opponent's Pokemon. It also has a usable attack here where you can do 60 damage and make your opponent's active Pokemon confuse, but with uh, decks in Japan such as Dragapult EX seeing a lot of success, moving some damage counters around from your small HP Pokemon is going to be helpful, especially when you could use this during your turn. You don't need to be the active, it's not when you attach a Dark Energy, it's during your turn. So Monkey Dory seems like it's going to be quite a lit uh, inclusion to Lost Zone Box and quite a few other decks. Uh, is this deck going to reach higher than 9? I'm honestly not sure. Um, that's why I put it down here. I had to put them somewhere, so let me know if I'm right or wrong. Some interaction on this video would be absolutely amazing. One of the oddest deck choices coming in at number 8 is Dragapult plus Charizard EX. Now, when we look at Charizard EX, we're probably only looking at it for uh, kind of an attacking, big attacker. 
But we got to look at its ability and say that we're able to accelerate energies, and it is a way to accelerate fire energies to our Pokemon. Um, with us being able to accelerate fire energies to our Pokemon, there are quite a cool, few cool things that we can do when it comes down to it, um, including powering up Dragapult EX. Now, Dragapult EX is a card that kind of slipped off my radar as I was going through this set, um, and it's because I didn't necessarily understand the power of Phantom Dive. Doing 200 damage plus 6 damage counters to your opponent's bench book on it any way you like allows you to build up damage in play, kind of bringing back some old Dragapult VMAX vibes. The other big thing about this deck is instead of playing Pidgeot, we now have Dracoloak, which for its Renaissance Raid ability says once during your turn you may look at the top two cards of your deck and put one of them into your hand. Put the other card on the bottom of your deck. Um, it really gives you a lot of options to kind of sift through your deck draw those cards and have a viable attacker so viable attacker plus energy acceleration viable draw plus another viable attacker and of course we got some cool new cards in the deck such as unfair stamp so you can only play this card if one of your opponents or one of your pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's last turn you, each player shuffles their hand into their deck your opponent draws two you get to draw five that sounds unfair right Max that with some disruption cards like Iono throughout the game, and your opponent can be in a tough position. I think that this deck is actually really cool, and I want to crack the code on it a little bit more. Um, might again, one of these decks could be low, they might be non existent by the time the set releases, but I do think Dragapult Charizard EX is one of the coolest decks I've seen in a long time. I'm a huge fan of Stage 2 Pokemon, and I hope you like playing this deck around too. Chen Pao might be one of the most arguably successful decks in our format right now but it hasn't necessarily been seeing the love in Japan for next format. It's not like it's doing bad or nothing, it is ranked 7th on this list, and the other decks on this list are also doing quite well. But the card that I really like adding to this deck is the new Wellspring Ogre Pawn. Now Wellspring Ogre Pawn has an attack that says 20 damage, the defending Pokemon can't retreat, so it's nice to have maybe a soft way to lock opponent, uh, your opponent's Pokemon in the active spot for a few turns, while you build up some cool plays, maybe with Iron Hands EX. But the real reason why I like this card is Torrential Pump. You can do 100 damage, and you may shuffle 3 energies attached to this Pokemon into your deck. If you do, it does 120 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. I think that really gives a lot of uh, options to go for 100 plus 120, shuffle the energies back, we have access to more energies, which might take a little bit of a reliance off of Super Rod and Superior Energy Retrieval. The rest of this deck is still going to be quite aggressive, but having another Pokemon in the deck that can draw 2 prize cards... Um, in any capacity, really allows our, us to put our, our, ourself in an advantageous position. Radiant Greninja might be prized, it might be in the discard pile, they forget about it, Mana Fee's gone, we still have Canceling Cologne after all of that, so I do like the idea of the Wellspring Mask Ogre Pawn EX in this deck. Everything else is good, and I ended up cutting a Cypher Maniac's Code Breaking from the deck, I think that's an acceptable cut. But if there's any other cut that you'd make, let me know. I think this is really probably the list, especially with the amount of players that have been playing something very similar. Um, this is really where I'd go with it. Nothing else too much, but uh, Wellspring Ogre Pawn, I think that's one of my favorite cards of this new set. Okay, even this one surprised me. Maridon EX is back. Uh, this is actually very similar to the list that won the Sapporo Champions League. And I'm just out here wondering why. Um, I mean, I guess it's not too, too, too crazy, because we have a lot of opportunities to use Iron Hands EX with double turbo, hit those electric generators, and the deck's kind of like that. Uh, being able to search out your lightning Pokemon is fantastic, and the new Tatsugiri might add an element of success here. Um, Tatsugiri's really cool, because it says its ability allows you to look at the top six cards of your deck when it's in the active spot, reveal a supporter card you find there, and put it into your hand. That might allow you, after a late game, Iono or something, to send Tatsugiri up with the escape board on it, look for that game-winning Arvin or boss, and really put it to the next level. Um, right on EX, Stonks might be going up, so if you haven't already, pick up a League Battle deck. You don't own the cards. I think this deck's kind of cool. Um, might not necessarily be the most skill-intensive deck of all time, but there's definitely some sequencing things here that are really cool, and I think that Maridon has some decent potential, especially against some decks that have some lower HP. Um, I don't want to foreshadow too much or give up too much information, but Lugia is back, um, and it's back with a punch, and I think that that might be one of the reasons why. On top of there being quite a few decks that have a low amount of HP that Iron Hands EX can take an advantage of. 
If that's the case, Maridon is coming in hot at number six. So check it out. Again, all the lists are available for copy and paste in the pinned comment in the comment section. Swinging into number five is Gardevoir EX. Now Gardevoir EX gets a couple new cards in this deck and you can see Unfair Stamp works with kind of the disruptive element of the deck, but I could see some cool cards such as Hyper Aroma, which allows you to search your deck for up to three stage one Pokemon, or I've even seen some lists running Secret Box. So you can only use this card if you discard three other cards from your hand. Search your deck for an item card, a Pokemon tool card, a supporter card, and a stadium card. Reveal them, put them into your hand. I like Unfair Stamp right now, or I can even see Hero's Cape like we previously had it, but we'll have to continue to see what those cards do. One card that I added in that I didn't see in a lot of Japanese lists is Pheasantipity. If any damage is done to this Pokemon by attacks, and this Pokemon has any darkness energy attached to it, flip a coin of heads to prevent that damage. Psychic... 30 times it does 30 damage for each energy attached to this pokemon we can load up five energies to 150 that's enough kind of for a kind of like a gardevoir chilling rain attack especially if we put bravery charm on this pokemon since we're already playing darkness energy and we got monkey dory in our deck it seems like a decent fit so you can see that this darkness theme monkey dory pheasantipity um single prize card attacking psychic box deck might actually end up being pretty cool and i like going with a bunch of one of techs instead of japan just going double drift loon double flutter main stuff like that um is the dark package with the pheasant dippity and monkey dory gonna actually work out we'll have to find out i'm just actually surprised i didn't play the dlc of scarlet violet i didn't even know what a monkey dory or pheasant dippity were until i started making this video and exploring our newest set uh twilight masquerade so those are really some uh, interesting choices you get out to this deck. I'm sure you could play a traditional, like the list that Josh Frank made top four with at Orlando Regionals. Falling from the number one spot all the way to number four is Charizard EX. Now Charizard EX is a deck that I thought was going to be just number one for a while. And I'd expect there to be a grass deck if there was like a really popular grass deck uh, to pop it off. And it's not like we're losing to Sinatra EX or uh, Teal Mask Ogre Pond here. No grass decks up at the top. I'm sorry, y'all grass fans. It's not up there. Charizard is changing a little bit, though. You can see Monkey Dory is uh, becoming a little bit more of a package. It's going to allow us to do a little bit more extra damage to our opponent's Pokemon. So if they swing into a Charizard, we can use Monkey Dory, move that damage back. And a lot of people might be wondering, how are you getting that Darkness Energy? Well, you can get that Darkness Energy out by searching it out with Pidgeot EX. One thing that you might be noticing in a lot of decks is... We're changing back to the 70 HP versions of our Pokemon. That's because Dragapult EX can snipe six damage counters wherever it likes, allowing us to uh, basically be survive instead of not getting knocked out. Of course, Monkey Dory is going to put some of that back. It's going to be quite cool. Another card that we have in this deck that you might not have seen before is Kirin. So you get to choose one, uh, switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon, giving you an opportunity to uh, have an out against control or just switch around or maybe you don't have the energy. Um, or during your, during your turn, the Pokemon that's in your active spot, do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon EX or Pokemon V, really allowing us to take a Charizard and take it from 180 damage up to 210. And it, it can basically make Charizard scale at any point in the game, especially when you pair with Monkey Dory, uh, Choice Belt, Maximum Belts. We have a lot of ways to increase our damage output, and that's going to make Charizard an interesting choice, um, going forward in this metagame. Will Charizard find its way back on top? We'll have to find out um, if this more aggressive damage modification build is the way to go. If so, we might find Charizard flying high again. In a surprising change of events, Lazontina is on its way up, where I thought this deck might have been on its way down. Blood Moon Ursaluna really adds to this deck, giving it more of a punch at various points throughout the game, similar to what we got from Lawzone Box. However, Blood Moon Ursaluna here gives us that extra punch as a two-prizer, so maybe we could tank something, then go with Tina V-Star, and Roxanne is really going to be our backup to maybe make sure that our opponent can't get a knockout. One thing that we've changed with this deck is we've added Maximum Belt as our ace spec again, allowing us to knock out some Pokemon like Dragapult EX, knocking out Charizard EX, and allowing Blood Moon Ursaluna to reach new heights. Really, I think that Lost Zone Tina is kind of interesting, and with Charizard being on the decline, we've actually been able to replace that spot uh, where Iron Leaf's EX was with Blood Moon, Ursaluna EX, giving the deck a little bit more of a well-rounded approach against the metagame. I think that Blood Moon, Ursaluna EX is really going to be added to a lot of decks, giving yourselves attacks out of nowhere that your opponent wasn't really expecting. 
So expect the unexpected. Lost Zone Tina's all the way up here. And of course, it's got the rest of the Lost Zone kind of uh, shenanigans. Whereas Lost Zone Rocks only plays one Psychic Energy for Sableye. We still have four Psychic Energies overall. And enough energies where we can attack with Radiant Greninja. We can attack with Cramorant. We can attack with whatever we want. I think that Lost Zone Tina might add some other tech cards in the future. Because this list is a little bit plain. But plain doesn't necessarily mean bad. Plain often means consistent. And I guess the biggest thing that we're going to ask ourselves now are... What are the top two decks? Are there any decks that we haven't necessarily seen so far? What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, if you need any of these cards, check out our sponsors at Kayfabe Cards and PTCGL Store. Or if you're trying to sleeve up any of these decks to practice, use Katana Sleeves from Ultimate Guard. Flying High at number two is one of the decks that I've been getting known for for the past little bit, Lugia V-Star. Now, Lugia V-Star, it already has the Chinchino package, but... We've added in a little bit of color here. Now, we gained the new card, Legacy Energy, and that's the card that really changed it all. So as long as it's attached to a Pokemon, it provides every type of energy. And since Archaeops can only attach special energies, this really gives us an opportunity to accelerate energies to Pokemon like Iron Hands EX or Wellspring Ogre Pond. Um, once during the game, if this Pokemon is attached to is knocked out by damage from an attack, your opponent draws one fewer prize cards. This allows us to accelerate energies to cards like Iron Hands EX, draw an extra prize card, and our opponent's going to be taking one less. There's a reason why half the game is playing Temple of Sinnoh, Enhanced Hammer, cards like that. It's because Legacy Energy is absolutely filthy broken. We can also use Wellspring Ogre Pawn to make sure that we do 100 plus 120, shuffle those energies back, and take two prize cards before our opponent has an opportunity. So when they're playing against a Lugia deck, not only are they worried about a Lugia V-Star that can attack... They need to be worried about a Wellspring Ogre Pond that can shuffle energies back, requiring you to have a little bit less energies throughout the game. And, of course, they're going to need to Manaphy down on their bench because otherwise they might be getting benched out. We also have the new Carmen uh, supporter, which says if you go first, you can use this card during your first turn. You pitch, draw five. So it's like a Professor's Research that can be used at any point during the game. I think that's quite powerful, and it might be something that I'm going to see success with at NAIC. I'm a huge Lugia fan. Having all these different attackers, including now Luminion, which could get shuffled back into your deck, is absolutely fantastic. I might even cut a Professor's Research from this deck for another Luminion V. And that really brings us to our number one deck. What could it ever be? I'm sure a lot of you have that guess. And maybe you've seen it in the thumbnail. Maybe you didn't. Let's get into it. Our number one pick is... Number one is that Dragapult Zatu. Now, Dragapult Zatu is not necessarily a deck that I thought of when it was going to be number one. But I think it makes a lot of sense. Zatu being able to accelerate energies to your Dragapult gives us opportunities to make sure that we are able to get set up quite quickly. And of course, having access to things like Raining Alakazam allows us to have some cool damage counter focus. Typically, the most plain decks are going to be the best decks. And Techno decks like Dragapult, Zatu, um, or sorry, Dragapult, Charizard might be a little bit too much for some decks to stomach. This deck is built very much like a Charizard EX deck from previous uh, formats. And I think that's really where it's going to see a lot of success. We have opportunities to use Cloud Stadium to take away cards like Rotom or Luminion. We have got Tatsugiri, where Mew Celebrations might have allowed us to get things previously. We could grab those supporters. And of course, we could draw cards with Zatu, accelerating energies to our powerful Pokemon. And having the draw of Dracologue as well. I think that Dragapult DX really gives us a lot of opportunities with Technical Machine Devolution, uh, Radiant Alakazam, and of course our attack to put our opponent in a tough situation. I also personally want to put my opponent into a tough spot with Countercatcher, Unfair Stamp, spread some damage around, and have a multi-prize card turn. Decks like these are typically going to be more higher skill based, so stay tuned for that when you're kind of playing through this new format, and it's really a deck that I recommend practicing. I did have a video, I'm not sure if it's going to be coming out this week or if it's next week, going over all the best cards in the set. Dragapult is one of those decks that I was sleeping on, but now I'm not really sleeping on it. Don't sleep on Dragapult. This is arguably going to be the most successful deck at any IC, and this video is going to really help you out get understanding the metagame earlier. So if you're trying to build these decks online, got all the access to the list in the pinned comments. Otherwise, um, start practicing on the Limitless tabletops, inner life with your friends with some proxies, and of course, testing out pre-releases, getting those cards early. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate everyone who's been tuning into the channel. We made it to 20k subs. Let's go! I also want to give a shout out to Advanced GG. They recently uh, sent me some stuff. Um, I tried it. I love it. Uh, Guava Berry. 
Not saying uh, it's going to be for everyone, but for me, I really like uh, the energy of the guava berry. The taste is fantastic. I'm one of those people at Pokemon tournaments. Uh, if I don't have caffeine, I'm a zombie. Uh, the advanced GG uh, energy guava berry has been fantastic. So just want to give you my total honest opinion on it right now. So shout out them. This has been keeping me alive as a Pokedad to be. Um, but if you want to check out some of our stuff in the description, you totally can. Um, including in the pinned comment, there are all those lists you can copy and paste into any of the Limitless Tabletop Simulators or other ones. If you're trying to support the squad, consider picking up some... I'm grabbing down my little thing here. My back's hurting. The Katana Sleeves. Um, we always use Katana Sleeves at tournaments for the most part. Um, I, at least I always use Katana Sleeves. These have been fantastic. I've been deck checked at regionals. And uh, they really hold up firmly. Um, obviously check your sleeves in between rounds, uh, but if you're playing at originals, I have had no problems with these and I've been playing Pokemon for 20 years. We got our sponsors at Kayfabe, uh, so if you're going to be over at LA regionals or anything else like that, they are going to be vending there. Tell them that the Shuffle Squad sent you. Probably got some Twilight Masquerade cards. And of course, use code TSS5 at, uh, 55555, TSS5 at, uh, ptcglstore.com. You can pick up all those Twilight Masquerade codes once they come out to build these decks online and um, test them out on live against the homies. Uh, I'm trying to think about what else we're going on. I'm going to be playing in some cups in Toronto. I'm going to be playing at LA Regionals. Got NEIC coming up shortly after that. And of course, I've already booked Worlds. I'm already uh, invited to Worlds, so I'll see all y'all there. Other than that, um, things are going great. I just signed the papers for a condo um, outside of Montreal. So really excited for that. Uh, big move. Uh, baby on the way so if you haven't known now you know and uh, just really good things going on in my life so I appreciate it um, life is great life is doing good uh, earlier this year I had some mental health struggles but I appreciate everyone who's uh, tuned in and supported me along the way including many of you viewers so I'm gonna keep on uh, plugging away drinking some more of this guava berry stuff uh, keeping me alive and uh, maybe it's the energy maybe I'm just happy but uh, I appreciate everything right now thank you so much everyone for tuning in I'll catch up with all y'all later Peace out and have a great one. Great one, great day, whatever, great night. Have a great one. Bye. Want to support the Shuffle Squad? Be sure to check out all of our sponsors in the description to pick up Pokemon TCG singles, sealed, and PTCG live codes. You made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching this entire video from the Shuffle Squad. Honestly, from the bottom of our hearts, we appreciate each and every person that supports our content, watches what we have going on every single day, every single week, even from time to time, and uh, continuously allows us to have a forum to project our creative content towards the Pokemon TCG community. So if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and even leave a comment to help boost the YouTube algorithm. That being said, we'll catch you with our next video. Thanks again. Take it easy.